Now, the European Parliament has adopted a resolution seeking to counteract propaganda by third parties, which places Russia and ISIL on the same footing in terms of perceived international threats. Artis Peter Oliver has been following the debate, now joining us live from Berlin. Uh, Peter, why does the bloc Hello. want to counter Russian media? Well, why they want to why they want to do that we'll come to in just a moment but what we do know is that they've certainly voted in favor of this motion um, in this favor of this resolution to counter EU anti-EU propaganda by third parties 304 MEPs saying they were in favor of it 179 uh, saying they were against it with 208 abstentions now I was listening to the debate last night on this particular question um, and some of it it was rather venomous when it came to Russia. We are at war with Russia. We are on a collision course with each other, traveling faster than a jet fighter. Russia has tried to damage the EU. The enemy is pushing its narrative hard. The Kremlin wants to split Europe. It forces its information into our countries. What the Russians and extremists don't like is freedom. Russia and ISIS share the same aim. They're toxic. Well, how the resolution will be worded in its final form is still yet to be revealed. Uh, we can expect that in probably around an hour or so's time. Um, but a lot of people did also voice their, well, they weren't unhappiness, really, with the way that Russia was lumped in in one sentence uh, with ISIS, with the Islamic State. Many saying that to lump in a terrorist organization with a sovereign state just wasn't the way that European politics should be done. I'm surprised by the totalitarian trend that's taken hold in European institutions. There is no Russian propaganda, just a number of people who remind us of reality, a reality that's not accepted by the European Parliament. We've reached a level of ridiculousness where we put Daesh and Russia on the same threat level in our reports. We're losing our grip on reality and sense of reason. It's so bizarre and it's hard to know whether to laugh or cry. Well, in the debate on Tuesday evening, RT was mentioned twice by name. Uh, we're still waiting, of course, to find out the exact wording of the resolution that has been adopted by the European Parliament. But certainly, it does seem that we're coming more and more under the spotlight by them. All right, Peter, thank you for that. We uh, do know that a uh, similar report calling to single out and challenge individuals who actually appear in the Russian media is now being debated at the UK Parliament. Let's cross over to our UK correspondent, Polly Boyko, now. Uh, Polly, what are the main arguments of this debate? Yeah, look, this is a report. It's actually, it's not being debated, it's being presented in Parliament today in a committee room hosted by a British member of Parliament. It's by the Henry Jackson Society, a British think tank, and the title speaks for itself. It's all about Putin's so-called useful idiots. The main message in this report is that anyone who speaks to the Russian media or expresses a remotely pro-Kremlin point of view on whatever subject, it doesn't matter, but they should be named and shamed. People who go on channels like ours need to be directly challenged for their views. It says that anyone who's accepted fees for media appearances on channels like ours has accepted money directly from the Kremlin. And all the people who do this across Europe need to be mapped out, which sort of conjures up pictures of agents and smoky rooms looking at maps and pins on walls of so-called networks. And um, it even alludes to the Cold War. It says that the KGB has these so-called comrade networks in place at the moment, just like it did during the Cold War. And one of the major conclusions of the report um, and recommendations is that it says that European parliaments need to create new legislations which would force politicians to declare every single media appearance that they make so that they can effectively be called out for appearing on channels like ours. But the most interesting thing about the report to me is this overall attitude, this othering of anybody who expresses a remotely pro-Kremlin point of view. It even calls out Nigel
Nigel Farage, the leader of uh, UKIP, the um, Brexit cheerleader for expressing a somewhat positive view about Vladimir Putin in the past. And I think it's probably what a few of RT's guests are so um, concerned about, that you've got quite a prominent British think tank presenting this report in Parliament. And in it, it's calling uh, for what effectively can be only be called a witch hunt for anyone who uh, associates with Russia in any way. And yes, it is just a report and think tanks come out with all sorts of stuff all the time. It's unlikely that the government is going to take up all or any of the recommendations contained inside it. But still, attitudes like this are quite insidious. A report here, an article there, will have the effect of perpetuating this very black and white narrative that we're seeing in the UK at the moment of the West being good and Russia being bad.